Hey everybody, Matthew Collar and Sam Ekstrom here, Purple Insider, out at TCO Performance Center. We just watched an actual football practice, an OTA practice with the Minnesota Vikings. And Sam, the biggest thing that stuck out to me today, the offensive line combination. The rookies were not getting the first team reps, and I feel like people are going to be upset. But I think this is like commonplace for what the Vikings usually do with rookies, to not let them take the first team reps in OTAs. Let them get their feet wet. You're totally right, and I expected this. A change would have been refreshing, though. Like, I think back to, to Pat Elfline having to compete with Nick Easton. Brian O'Neill had to compete and then wait to get his turn behind Rashad Hill. Ezra Cleveland had to wait behind Avion Collins and Dakota Dozier. So, like, this is, this is normal. But to me, when Rashad Hill is your placeholder at left tackle and Dakota Dozier is your placeholder at right guard, I mean, it, does it really hurt to put your rookies in early, build some chemistry, make sure Garrett Bradbury's comfortable with the guys to his right, and, and you know, Ezra Cleveland can work with Derrissaw to his left. I would have liked to see the team just commit to these two essential pieces right away. Uh, still early, a lot of OTAs left. I think we'll see multiple combinations, but at least for now, they're sticking with the incumbents, if you will, um, Hill at left tackle and Dozier at right guard. And we did see Ezra Cleveland at left guard, which I think he will stay there at left guard no matter who is uh, on his left and right. Now, I do think that this was just our first OTA practice, the first week of OTAs. There are two more to go, and then we have mandatory minicamp, so there's a long time before it's decided uh, or before the stage is set for training camp, but I wouldn't be surprised if we end up seeing Rashad Hill and Dakota Dozier on the first day of training camp to make Wyatt Davis and Christian Derrissaw earn it. Another notable thing, Kellen Mond talk about having to earn it was not taking any of the second team reps and of course not any of the first teams either as Kirk Cousins was out here. Mostly Jake Browning and Nate Stanley, Sam. That's going to get fans excited, right? Yeah, Kellen Mond was basically QB4 because Stanley and Browning rotated in with the twos and Mond was left to take uh, kind of the straps with the threes so they're not they're not moving him along fast either I think that's just kind of this team's mo they're not going to give rookies anything too fast and, and especially when it is a little sensitive with, with Kellen Mond like how are they going to deal with this quarterback that's now looming behind Kirk Cousins um, I guess they don't want to give the appearance of him sort of breathing down Cousins uh, neck yet uh, and he, he does have a lot to learn, too, Collar. The quarterback is a, a difficult position. There's a lot of playbook to learn, and he's just easing in as slowly as can be right now. We saw him throwing balls to, I don't know, Dan Chisna and K.J. Osborne and Blake Prohl today. There wasn't, wasn't a lot noteworthy from uh, Kellen Mond. No, there was not, but I think that it makes sense in this case, maybe more than the offensive line because Jake Browning and Nate Stanley know the offense. They're playing with the same offense that they did last year. It's just a different Kubiak running it. And here's Kellen Mond going from playing mostly in the shotgun to having to completely adapt how he plays. I think it's okay to bring him along slowly. And there's no push for Kellen Mond to play right away that it's going to be, well, Rick Spielman said in an interview, two more years, but at very least one more year. So we don't have to say, oh, what's wrong with Kellen Mond if he's playing on the you know, the fourth guy uh, in the first day of OTAs. Now we'll see as we go along if he starts to ascend and get more of those second team reps. And if he doesn't, then maybe there's something to watch for there. The other thing, no Daniil Hunter. Courtney Cronin from ESPN had reported that he was not here on the first day either. Very notable that he's not as we continue to track whether the Vikings will give him a new contract. Uh, Sam, do you think that this goes on through all of OTAs that we don't see Daniil Hunter? And, and what does it mean that he's not here? Yeah, I tend to think that it does, and, and we'll probably get a little more information whether he's here or not at mandatory minicamp. That would be informative, I think, to how serious this problem is. Um, but it, it is telling that he's the, the most primary veteran not present. The only other one of, of real note was Cameron Dantzler. We don't know if that's you know injury, personal, or, or why he's not here. But otherwise, everyone else is here. So Daniil Hunter being a holdout does tell you that uh, there is at least some level of tension, but again, this is voluntary. He doesn't need to be here, and uh, if he thinks he can get an extra you know, $10, $20 million in a renegotiation, then I don't blame him for not wanting to risk any type of injury. 
So I think this draws on at least into mid-June. The Vikings have some money opening up when Kyle Rudolph's kind of money kind of comes off the books. Maybe they can renegotiate something. But I do think this goes until at least mandatory minicamp. And in terms of total attendance, most people were here, as you mentioned. Jeff Gladney also was not. And that's a situation we continue to play the wait and see game. I'll give you my one highlight of the day because I'm sure that people want to know. Yep. Harrison Hand with an unbelievable interception. I really mean it. It was incredible. It was a tip ball that he had to dive and make the play. I'm sure Vikings com will put it out there because it was legitimately a good play and I, I think that with the some of the other positions in the cornerback group up in the air if they don't sign someone Harrison Hand does become an interesting name to keep an eye on through the offseason program yeah I'm gonna throw the red flag on the Harrison Hand interception I think it might have hit the ground but my my play of the day a couple plays actually Patrick Peterson playing with the ones of course had two really impressive pass breakups on Adam Thielen where he closed ground on sort of an outbreaking route, broke up the play. I don't want to overreact. It's just OTAs, but I felt like that's the type of play you expect Patrick Peterson to make on a regular basis. Also, Justin Jefferson, still good at He's football. Good, yeah. There's your OTA analysis like you can get nowhere else from TCO Performance Center. Make sure you check out our written work, purpleinsider.substack.com and our podcast, Breaking This Down in More Depth, wherever you get your podcast, just type in Purple Insider. We'll catch you next time.